We depend on our eyes more than any other sense in our body. Now, sight is a precious gift we can sometimes take for granted. Our eyes are windows to the wonders of the world. Our eyes enable us to appreciate the beauty around us. You know, the clear blue skies, green leafy trees, the colorful spring flowers, the beautiful sunset and so on. Without them, unfortunately, we cannot experience all these things we get to know, love, discover and cherish. Not only are they windows to the outside world for us, but for the medical professionals, our eyes are windows into the functionings of our own bodies. Through our eyes, the medicals can, for example, see if conditions like you know, diabetes, hypertension are well controlled. Now for all these wonders, these remarkable organs provide us throughout our lives, they surely deserve to be well looked after. So today we discuss eye care. We will first look at the ins and outs of the normal eye, what can go wrong with our eyesight, how some of these common eye conditions are treated, and we'll then leave you with some useful tips on how to look after those precious eyes. Now to guide us in this discussion is an internationally acclaimed specialist ophthalmologist, a senior optometrist, and executive director of the National Council for the Blind. So sit back, relax, and learn from this exciting show ahead. Your questions and views are always welcome, and the telephone number to reach us at is Johannesburg 714 6841-6842 or 6843. You can also tweet us, by the way, at SABC Health Talk or simply interact with us on our Facebook page, SABC Health Talk. I'm Dr. Silo Mutaoum and this is Health Talk. The human eye is an amazing, sensitive and valuable organ. The precious human organ allows us to see the interesting and beautiful world around us. Regular eye examination is important regardless of one's age or health as this can help to early detect eye diseases and other illnesses. It can also reduce your risk for permanent loss of vision. You must come in regularly to look at the health of the eye and like I previously said also the health of your body. We can see in the eye whether you have uh, bleeding on the back of the eye, high blood pressure, you can name up many diseases uh, that we can detect inside the eye. Um, if it's an external eye problem, we have this instrument here. This is called a slit lamp and that enlarges your eye to the size of a rugby ball, I always say and you can look at the finest detail of the front of the eye with this. I range from slight non-sight threatening to extremely serious with blind consequences. The first step in prevention is to understand the cause of eye injuries. There are a number of factors both in and out of your control that could put you at risk of developing an eye condition. However, some factors can be avoided. The main enemy now of this era is working too close to your laptop, computer, or anything, your cell phone for extended periods. You then get a condition called functional nearsightedness as a result of doing the wrong thing by working too close to your face for extended periods. Your eye adapts to that. And that's fine but then you can't see far. So we treat that by first telling the patient, work further away, look up more often, relax your eyes, especially when studying. Any eyes such as diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma have no symptoms in their early stages. People should see an optometrist if they notice some of the following symptoms. You get, first of all, a condition called myopia. Myopia is nearsightedness. In other words, you can see near, but you can't see far. Then you get astigmatism. That is basically your eye is round, but you have a sharp curvature and a flat one within the round area. The sharp curvature focuses more quickly in the eye and the flat one more to the rear. So your light focuses in two positions in the eye instead of one. Those patients can complain of bad vision or even double vision. And the one that everyone on earth goes through is the condition of 
suppress biopia and that is where your eye lens becomes hard after 40. Taking care of your eyes is crucial because they will last you for a lifetime. Right. So to learn more about, you know, the eye, it's a great pleasure at this stage to welcome my special guest, Dr. Khao Lekhodi. Now, Dr. Lekhodi is, um, as we said in the beginning, you know, a specialist ophthalmologist. He is the president of the World Ophthalmology Congress of the International Council of Ophthalmology, uh, of which he's the vice president. And he's also immediate past president of the Oph Ophthalmology Society of South Africa. A pleasure to ha have you here. Welcome. Thank you very much for All right. Before we get into all these issues around, you know, <laughs> the problems around that, let's talk about the normal eye now. Mm -hmm. Take us through, you know, what it, what it looks like, number one, mm -hmm. and what, well, how is it so important to our lives? First of all, you know that, you know, the eyes are there to eat for they, to, to us to see the beauty of life, you know. Right. That's why we are married to beautiful ladies, probably. <laughs> right. And uh, the reason being is that, first of all, I just came with here with the model, right. just to show you the, the, the anatomy of the eye. Right. First of all, you've got the eyelids, right. it's still part of the eye. Right. You know, that makes you to close your eyes and open your eyes. You've got tears, which also just to moisture your eyes. Right. And from there you go and look at the cornea. Mm. You know, the cornea, we, sometimes we say, is a window of the eye. Right. When it gets dirty, it can be a problem. You cannot drive a, a car with a dirty with green. You know, mm. that's the problem. Then. Let's remove the cornea, which right. is a clear thing. Right. Then we go in. Right. Then we look at this. This is what you call an iris. Right. The dark, some have got blue ones, dark oh, so ones. This is what gives the color of the, the eyes. The color, you know. Right. The color of the eyes, that's where we go. Yeah. You know, the blue eyes. Usually the blue eyes are the nice ones. Right. Then from there, the iris. Then from there, we go and see there's a hole we call the pupil. Right. You know, that's where the light enters into. It's like, it works like a camera, mm -hmm. you know. Then be just immediately behind the, the thing we've got the lens. Right. This is also very important. It's the one that can make you to see far, right. to see near. Okay. See, that's the, and okay. we'll talk about it later when it's disease. Okay. okay. From there we go at the back of the eye. We've got the retina. Okay. And this is what the doctors look at, isn't it? Yes. When we look at this, uh, we call it a direct ophthalmoscope. It's like a is a, a scope that we use to look at the back of the eye to see the retina at the back. Right. Then we also look at the optic nerve. Right. You see, that's all the information when it gets into the eye, they go to the retina, to the optic nerve, to the brain, which means you see me using your brain. Okay, so, yeah. so we can interpret all these images that come through yes. our eye. Yeah. Okay, now having understood that, now what can go wrong? First of all, Let's go by step from the beginning, you know. Let's start with the cornea, which right. is the cornea, which is the window of the eye here. Right. The cornea congenitally can have a problem. Right. It means that you the can be born with, we can with, be born with, with a some disease like with some problem the, with that. All right. Secondly, it can have a disease. Right. You know, like corneal ulcer. Corneal ulcer becomes a, you know, especially for the people who are working in the sugar cane uh, factories, mm -hmm. they have to protect their eyes. Mm -hmm. If then, from is the cornea, it can have a problem. Then we go to the lens. The lens is very important now because as you age, it also, it ages. Mm. Then as it ages, it starts to form what you call a cataract. Okay. This is which is going to be look like this. We're going to we are still focus going a lot more on, on, on this a, a bit later. Yeah. Then after the lens, we go to the retina. Mm. Where the retina also can have a problem, like for instance, people who've got diabetes. You've mm. mentioned on your... Uh, introduction that people who've got diabetes, right. hypertension, they can have, they can bleed at the back of the eye. Right. Then we go back, we look at the optic nerve. Mm -hmm. It can have a problem from what? We call it glaucoma. Glaucoma is high pressure of the eye that is going to lead to impinging on the optic nerve, right. leading it to be compressed. Now it distort all the vision. Okay. Let's, let's come and talk about some of those common ones now. Yes. Con common conditions that can affect the eye, you know. You hear about the pink eye or the red eye and, and what is pink eye, by the way? Pink eye is just a term that we people are using on most of the courses. It's just a, on our term we call conjunctivitis. Right. 
And the pink eye it usually goes with the fact that it's a viral conjunctivitis. Okay. It, it has its own times of So it's, it's, it's an it's infection it, of the eye by a virus? Not, let's not, you know when you say an eye is something different. Let's yeah. say conjunctiva. Okay. Conjunctiva, it's a layer that, pro, that covers this muscle yeah. you know, around here. Yeah. It's a transparent and also it's got some blood vessels. Right. Then it becomes red, it becomes inflamed. Okay. You know, because from what? From the virus part. Okay. Then it becomes very red and it's very infectious. And it's easily treatable? Yes. Uh, by, you know, you have to be at, attended by the, by the doctor. Right. And also they can give you some, you know, some antibiotics for that. Okay. But sometimes, you know, it can heal on its own after four or five, so see, but it's a so, uncomfortable condition. So how, how can conditions. one know that, you know, for this problem, yeah. I need to take my child to a doctor, for instance? First of all, I usually tell the patients that, or my students, that every time when a patient has got a red eye, let, it must be seen. Mm -hmm. Why does he have a red eye? It's okay. supposed any to be any discharge? Discharges also, and also the discharge of of a, a red eye, let's say not a viral conjunctivitis, it differs from, mm. because there's a, there's a conjunctivitis that's caused by a virus, yeah. the discharge is clear, yeah. the discharge of a bacterial infection is yellowish, yeah. and also there are some people, unfortunately, they tend to use urine to clean their eyes, then unfortunately, they've got STDs, which is sexual transmitted disease, yeah. and going into the eye, what it's going to cause, it's going to gonococcal of the eye. Mm. And that can lead for blindness for good because the gonococcal inside the eye, yeah. it melts the cornea yeah. because it's the bacteria is so toxic. Mm. It melts the cornea. Then so the cornea it's not a is, good idea to wash not, your, your eyes with urine. I don't know who in no, this no, day no. and age does this. Wash your eyes with clean water. Right. No right. Vaseline into the eye, no Vicks into the eyes. Okay. Just, what about allergies? How do they affect the eyes? It, the, the allergies also affect, and it's usually, it's usually commonly seen during this time of the year, or springtime, mm -hmm. you know, whereby you will see, you know, young ones usually, you know, we, they, they come with what we call venal keratoconjunctivitis. Right. Venal is the word for allergy. Yeah. Kerato is the part of the eye. Yeah. Conjunctivitis is inflammation of the eye. Okay. Then... Uh, they tend to develop this itchiness of the eye, tearing of the eye, and it can be treated, you know, mm -hmm. you, by eye drops. This one can be treated. All right. Yes. Okay. So they just need to take the child to a doctor. Yeah. All right. Definitely. We'll, we'll come back and talk a little more about some of the more common conditions. But for now, we go for a quick commercial break. After the break, yes, we discuss those common eye conditions. Please stay with us. Shield Medical Scheme. We don't just talk health, we do health. It's so good, nothing else can replace. Just your slightest embrace. And if you only would be my own for the rest of my day. I will whisper this phrase, my darling Ceci Bon. MedShield Medical Scheme doesn't just cover you when you're ill, we'll help you stay well. The big news is Newsroom. We also stream live on YouTube. Whether you're at home, at the office or at the gym, wherever you are, Newsroom is right there with you. Bringing you all the latest news, updates, sports, weather, and everything in between. Get all the latest news you need on the go via live streaming on our YouTube channel. That's Newsroom, weekdays at 9 a.m., only on the SABC News Channel. All right, welcome back. Now, we're going to learn a little bit more about eye conditions, you know, those common eye conditions and blindness. But before we do that, we do have something to show you. Please take a look at this. 
I was born fully sighted and then um, 17 years I finished school. After finishing school I took a gap year. Malashni Persensi, now a call center student at Optima College, started falling sick while at work. She then went to see several doctors to improve her health. She was told she has low blood pressure and her body lacks iron. Through Melashni's long journey with health specialists, she was later diagnosed with a disease called Takayasu arteritis. Took some scans, tests and everything. I was in hospital for say about a month. I was in hospital. Um, the tablets, I'm not sure if it was a tablet that they gave me or if it was a disease. But at some stage, I couldn't walk. And then um, some people came to me and they prayed there for me and I started walking again. I was quite healthy, I felt healthy. And then I told them, no, I feel healthy enough now. Um, I feel like I can go home. So they discharged me, I went home. With the long battle with the disease, her left eye also started to develop cataract, which is the most common cause of blindness. Later on, her right eye also developed a cataract and surgery was the only option for Malashni. When I went for the operation, they removed the, the cataract. The next day I had to go back because they removed the patch from my eye. So I told my mother, after coming back from the hospital, I want to go shopping because I am longing for, shop, for shopping. So when I went there, um, they removed the patch from my eye. The nurse said, can you see anything? I said, no, I can't see anything. She said, no, maybe it's because you had the patch on for the whole night. So maybe just, it's going to be blur for a few seconds. Let's just check maybe later. She came back, she took the torch, she held it into my eye. I couldn't see anything. She took me to, to, to the doctor. He said, no, there's no more. There's nothing that we can do for you. South African National Council for the Blind Resource Centre. You're speaking to Malaysia. How may I help you? Good English. Devastation, hopelessness and nerve-wracking. That's how the call centre student felt about being told that she will live the rest of her life blind. Being told that she will not be able to see again can be frightening. However, acceptance of your condition can better one's lives. I won't say I was okay with the fact that I, bli I went blind, but I've... I've tried living with it. I've been trying to live with it. And I think I'm doing quite well. Most cases of blindness are avoidable, either through prevention or through proper treatment, which is why it is important to get your eyes tested at least once a year. Of course you do. Hey, uh, uh, before we talk a little bit about you know, blindness and introducing my other special guest, let's take a caller, Maltesia from Limpopo. Maltesia, welcome to Health Talk. Good day, so how are you? Mm, your question, please. No, my question is, I when I watch TV, I use the side of my eye. I cannot face the TV straight, and I cannot read the waves from far. You, you, you <laughs> cannot read? Yeah, okay. So the doctor, I think, would heard that. All right, let's get a response from Dr. Lahori. Dr. Lahori? The, she, she has what you call a refractive error. All right. And uh, that's the reason why she says she cannot read very well and okay. she cannot see the TV very well. Oh, that's I see. to me okay. probably the best thing to do to see an optometrist okay. first so that yeah. probably you may need spectacles. Yeah. And that's, that's All right. that it will sort of have a problem. Well, Maltesha, just stay watching because we are going to be talking about those refractive uh, problems, uh, but in the next segment. So I'm sure you will get your answer. Let me take this opportunity to introduce my other special guest, uh, Diri Matswani. Uh, Mudiri is the Acting National uh, Executive Director of the South African Council for the Blind and is also Principal of the Optima College. Welcome to Health Talk. Uh, Thanks Matsuani. a lot, Doctor. All right. Perhaps, perhaps let's, let's start by asking you about the National mm -hmm. Council for the Blind. What, what do you do? Okay, like it says, South African National Council for the Blind, mm. our main focus is the life of the visually impaired. Right. Meaning, like it said, the council, we consist of various groups, right. member organizations, mm -hmm. um, including academics, education. Your, we have 22 special schools for the visual impaired, mm -hmm. which also are part of the National Council for the Blind. Mm -hmm. National Council for the Blind was uh, established in 1929. Now it has more than 
over 100 member organizations, mm -hmm. either looking at various issues, social issues, academic issues, uh, seeking for employment. Um, we, we, we assist them in various ways mm -hmm. to, to, to cope with the, with the, with the barrier. Mm -hmm. That is brought by so, the so it covers a wide spectrum of support that you give to uh, people with blindness. Exactly, Doctor. That's what we do. Because even when you look at uh, cancer itself, it has various divisions. We have social inclusion, we have Bureau for Prevention of Blindness, mm -hmm. and we have the Optima College, like you correctly mentioned. Right, right. So we look at various aspects of, uh, uh, various spheres of the life of the visual impaired. Okay. I want to ask you later about, you know, the, the, the impact and what it is like to live with blindness. I mm -hmm. suppose from a broader perspective of, you know, in your position as the National Executive Director of uh, uh, National Council for the Blind and perhaps your personal perspective. Of but before that, let's mm -hmm. take PJ from PE. PJ, welcome to Health Talk. PJ, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, your question, please. I, I, want, to, I want to ask something. Um, the white part of my eye has got uh, sores. And then when I'm looking at the mirror, I can see the sword, and uh, they've just protruded outside. But uh, they're not that big, and they don't affect my vision. Mm -hmm. I can see these uh, numbers when they test your eyes. I've seen the optometry. And then the other thing is uh, when it's very um, hot, and then I have some sweat, some? then I see it's very itchy. Okay. And okay. that part where the, the source is very uh, itchy. All right. Th thank you very much for your questions. I'm sure Dr. Lechodi will, will answer those. Um, I mean, it's, it's about sores on the white yes. part of the eye and the when itchiness. You, when you say that, probably what I'm thinking, he says he can see it. It is not painful. Yeah. Is it, probably it is pterygium. Right. It's a growth that grows from between the conjunctiva and the cornea. Yeah. And it can be removed. It's, it's, it, 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 does he have to worry about it? Not really. It doesn't what he must be worried. It has to be removed, exercised by the by exercised by the ophthalmologist. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah it, there's no any eye drops that can remove that. Okay. Only by surgery. And the itchiness when it's hot? Only the, we usually said to the patients that you know they can use what you call the you know this tears naturally that can make their eyes wet. Yeah. Their eyes the eyes must not be dry. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's come back to you, uh, 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 Mr. Maswani. Yes. So, impact. What, what is this like living with blindness? Yeah, I want us getting used to it because remember, I, I got blind when I was very young. Mm. Then I went to school for the visual impaired in Turbans. They called back to me. There. Do you mind telling us what happened to you? Oh, actually, I was injured. Uh, we were playing. Then I was injured on, on the forehead. I was told that the blood did not go out. Then it damaged my muscles. Mm then they could not uh, realize in, in time as, as to what was wrong with my, mm. with my eyesight because I was still young. Mm. I could not see because it was going gradually mm. until I lost completely my sight on my left eye. Mm. Then it, it was since eviscerated and then they could operate the right eye and little sight was restored. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm living with, uh, with glaucoma mm. and I have to control it. Mm. Like Dr. said, it's the pressure that we have to control. They have the medication that I'm using to control it. Okay. Perhaps let's, let's mm. pick that up on, on what he's just said now, Dr. Lakhodi. Um, some of those common medical conditions that, that can lead to blindness. Obviously, we've just heard that, mm. you know, um, injuries is, is one of them. But the medical conditions now. The other medical condition that is diabetic retinopathy, I mean, yeah. which can, diabetes mellitus, which causes diabetic retinopathy, right. mm. hypertension. Right. So can so these without proper control, you're saying that they can lead to blindness. Definitely, mm. diabetes is a dangerous disease. Right. It, we usually see it is a common disease that causes blindness, mm. and if we we get it and the patient be uh, referred or be seen at earlier stage, mm. we can prevent that. Okay. He yeah. mentioned he has glaucoma. glaucoma. What is glaucoma? Glaucoma, as I mentioned when I was studying that, it is high pressure of the eye. And that high pressure of the eye, it causes the impeachment on the optic nerve. Yeah. Then it damages the optic nerve. And unfortunately, yeah. once that optic nerve is damaged, yeah. it's irreversible. irreversible. Mm -hmm. My goodness. There's so no treatment for that. Mm. That's why people must see an ophthalmologist at least once or twice in a year mm. so that they can be examined and to be protected from glaucoma because mm. once you as a patient you see it is already late mm. 
That's not good news at all. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about cataracts just now, but let's take Ditsejo. Uh, Ditsejo on the line from Delmas. Ditsejo, welcome to Health Talk. Hey, Leganda. Dr. do your question, please? Yeah. Finally, many who are in a level of one of the food like Abone is in Therefore, the little is a private hospital, but however, to admit, probably I got the cost. I think probably the anthrax, whatever you are here, because people are having this part of the trip. Okay. How old is the mother? How old is she? I'm about 80. 80, all right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe just to. All right. All right. Okay. Just listen in. I'll, 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 we'll respond to your question. But what he's basically saying is that uh, he's got an 80 year old mother um, who has blurred vision, who can't, you know, see very clearly, and uh, apparently has no access to, you know, the the, the private health care, or at least, you know, she, he tried to take the mother to the hospital, and, uh, you know, where can he get help, basically. Yes, you can get either from the public sector or from the private sector. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, from the private sector, we're talking about cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, public sector, yes, can be helped. Because from the word he said, I think the, the grandmother has got a cataract. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be re which, surgical removed. Which can be easily... Yeah, what, what is cataract? What causes it? It's aging. As you, you heard, right. she's eight years old. Right. And the cornea, I mean, the, the lens is nice and clear while you're still young. Right. You know, after the age of 40, 45... Right. But this one we're talking about aging cataract. Right. I mean aging cataract. Yeah. Then it becomes white. It becomes okay. like this. And it blocks it the blocks vision. the vision. It okay. blocks the vision. In the next segment, just hold that thought. I'm gonna ask you about how we treat it. Okay. Let, let's let's have a look at some tweets that have just come through for, for now. All right. Uh says, uh, tears just comes out without me crying. Why? Okay, and Ethel says, every now and again, I feel like there's gravel in my left eye. Okay. And Nobert says, mine's become red on sunny days or when I'm angry, but I can see clearly. I want to know the cause. Is there any more? I think, yes. Free King says, how can I get rid of my spectacles? I don't want anything in my eyes. I think I'm short-sighted. All right. And uh, Sbu says, my eyes are itchy every morning. Huh. So the, the, there appears to be quite a lot of stuff there, yeah. but some of them quite common. Very quick response. Ninety percent of the question that they've asked there, I realize that most of them is to do with the dryness of the eye. Right. You know, they just need to just lubricate the eyes at a regular basis. Okay. That's so so some some of those can, you know, be, can treated. be treated quite yes. simply Almost by all just of them. visiting the, the pharmacist, perhaps. To get those uh, uh, eye drops? Yes, they okay. can visit the, the pharmacist or see a, 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 a general practitioner okay. and they can help them. Too. All right. Mr. Mudiri Matswani, Acting National Executive Director, South African National Council for the Blind and Principal of the Optima College. I want to thank you so much for you know, giving us your time and uh, best wishes. Okay, thanks a lot, Doctor. All right. Okay. On that note, then, we go for a quick break. When we come back, we now talk about those, yes, refractive eye problems and their treatment. Please stay with us. If we are talking health, then let's talk seriously. MedShield, embracing our members in good health since 1968. Hypertension is the condition where the blood pressure, the pressure in the blood vessels, it goes up. We often come out at the top of the ladder having the worst numbers. Uh, and I think that's because we almost have what I can call a perfect storm of high blood pressure risk factors. If you are diagnosed with hypertension, you just have to continue taking the medication for the rest of the life, of life. Because we try and reintegrate them and we try and retrain their abilities to be part of social society. We do a lot of work trying to educate people, trying to encourage and motivate people to lead a healthy lifestyle. Uh, so what a healthy lifestyle means from a blood pressure point of view is obviously the more active you are, uh, and uh, the better your heart is, the, better, the more fit your heart is and the better condition your blood vessels are. Catch Health Talk every Saturday from 9 to 10 with Dr. Silo Mutawo.
Welcome back. Now we're talking eye care, and with me in the studio is uh, Dr. Kaul Lekhodi, who's an ophthalmologist. And by the way, um, I had the pleasure of witnessing opening of the first eye hospital in Soweto yesterday. And Dr. Lekhodi is part owner of the Advanced Eye Hospital. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Thank All right. You. And, and of course, uh, another special guest joining us today is Rudin Diedricks. Rudine is a senior optometrist from Mellon's Eye Style, and she has her practice based in four ways, if I'm not mistaken, is yes. it? Welcome to Health Talk, Rudine. Thank you. Lovely to be here. All right. Let's, let's talk about, perhaps, let's start with you. You know, uh, we heard this notion that, you know, some people are short-sighted, uh, long-sighted, and that sort of thing. What are the common refractive problems that you see in your practice? Um, yes, so look, uh, one of the major um, conditions that we see is people that can't see well because then they come in to yeah. see us and, and ask for help. Mm. So nearsightedness is something that we see on a daily basis right. where someone can see um, objects close to them, but when something is further away, like that caller mentioned earlier, um, that would be nearsightedness, can be corrected with uh, spectacles and contact lenses. Mm -hmm. A second condition that we see is farsightedness, when people can see things in the distance, but when they are working on their computer mm -hmm. or doing reading work, they are having troubles. Okay, I want to ask you about, you know, what sort of ages you see, but let's take Sammy from Rustenburg. Sammy, welcome to our talk. Good day, sir. How are you? Good, how are you, sir? All right. Uh, Dr. Okhodi, I have problems with my eyes. When I detect flu, because I'm a kind of person, before I can see, uh, detect that I could feel, I was running uh, water in my eyes. They ran previously and they start itching. The quality of the line isn't that great. Yeah, did, did you hear that? No. Only the tearing of the eye. Yeah, we just had that your eyes tear, yeah. but can you just quickly go over it again, just quickly? My, well, uh, I'm a sinus person. I've got sinus. You have sinus. Okay, all right. Okay, yes, your eyes get before itchy. I can detect okay. that I've got flu or flu catching me. Ah, okay. All then right. my eyes start running. Okay, great. We got the question. Dr. Mahori, Thank here's you. a classical case. Somebody yes, who uh, says it's yes, got sinus and the eyes get that's, affected. How does it work? Yeah, it's got what you call seasonal allergic conjunctivitis. You right. know, uh, that's, of course, with the sinus also. As I, you know, remember we talked about it that this time, during springtime, is very common we see this type of patient. Right. Yes, it can be treated with the eye drops and you can also just see an opt an uh, a general practitioner or an ophthalmologist yeah. so that they can treat this eye. It can be treated. So, so, so essentially you say treat the, the, I mean the primary cause is the rhinitis, allergic rhinitis. Yeah. Uh, with the, the rhinitis is no longer me. It's yeah, a correct, correct. surgeon. But I mean yeah. what we're saying is they're interrelated. Yeah, yes, they're interrelated, yes. Okay, okay. Um, Rutin, let's get back to you in terms of, you know, the, what you see. You know, the, the, there was a, a very disturbing um, thing that was discovered by the Department of Health the other day, they went out, you know, testing eyesight in young school children. Some school children actually not doing very great simply because they could not see and they didn't have access to, you know, uh, services where they could, you know, mm -hmm. have their eyes checked on a regular sort of basis. Now, do you see children as well? We do. We do. We do advise uh, parents to have their children tested by the age of three already. Mm -hmm. So we should not wait until they're into school, into the education program, and then having a problem. Mm -hmm. Because the visual system is very sensitive, as the doctor can explain to us, yeah. um, and it needs to be treated as early as possible. Okay. So we, we need to look after our children's vision. So what are those, uh, let's call them common symptoms, that people should say, you know, because there is this in my child or there is this in me, I need to go and see an optometrist. It's important to remember that our um, visual conditions can be uh, hereditary. Mm. So if you and your husband are wearing uh, glasses and spectacles or contact lenses, you definitely need to get your kids tested at an early age because okay. they might have inherited that. Okay, so, so when there are any visual, we call them visual acuity problems, um, they can be treated simply by glasses, correct? And contact lenses. All right, let's let contact lenses. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that just now. But let's take Mr. Naidu from Devon. Mr. Naidu, welcome to Health Talk. Your question, please. Uh, good morning, Colonel. How are you? Good, good. Okay, man. Uh, yeah, you see, uh, what I just need to know is that you see when my uncle, my uncle is uh, is a squid. And squid. When we were born, I'm a twin. Yeah. We were born now. We were born as squint as well. 
And then okay. other than my brother and I, I'm the worst one. When my left eye always moved, it, it, it was dead. Okay. Then when I was about 12 years old and we did the operation, and then they tried to improve it, but it was a little bit better. Then whenever, like now, when I go and make, uh, when I go to the optician to have, the, to make glasses, he always have a problem with my left eye because it always moves, it's not stable, and he cannot do the measurement for the glasses. All right, let's then get a doctor. Know, when my daughter was born, my second daughter was born, she was 14 years old, and she also has the same problem. Okay. The left eye, that's why I need to know now why it's like from generation to generation. Okay, thanks Mr. Naidu. Brilliant question, Dr. Lohori. He mentioned that uh, the, uh, apparently the whole family has got a uh, squint, which mm. goes, uh, the other name is a strabismus. Yeah. And uh, they say they corrected it, but the thing that also that gives it the problem that the vision is poor, and when they go to the optometrist, unfortunately they cannot measure them very well because of, they say they, there's a moving eye. Yeah. Why, why should that eye move? What, that's called nystigmas. Yeah. Nystigmas is usually is a brain you know, disease, unfortunately, mm. cannot be treated. Really? The only way that sometimes we usually say is people can see better is when they use the contact lenses because when they remove the, the, the nystigmas, okay, you can move with the eyes, but with the spectacles, you can't, you know. Mm. And it's very common on albinos. Mm. If you've seen albinos, most of them, they've got that moving eyes, we call nystigmas. It's okay. to do with the brain. His question is, it why should it be in the entire family? Is it a genetic thing? Yes, mm. it can be genetic things. Mostly it's a genetic. All right. Yeah, just so, like albino. So what you suggest is perhaps um, uh, contact lenses as better than, you know, as, as, as compared Not to Not just to improve lenses. the vision, you know. Right. You know, is the, the aim is just to improve vision. We have to find a way of improving that vision, but we cannot treat it. We cannot treat it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, Whilst on treatment, let's talk about surgical treatment now. I mean, you know, Rudin just talked about, you know, treating, you know, visual acuity problems with, mm -hmm. with, with glasses and contact lenses. We're going to come back to contact lenses now. Yeah. Um, any methods to treat? Perhaps let's start with uh, cataracts. Okay. D does it mean that anybody that has a cataract must have surgery? Yes. Mm. Everybody who's got a cataract have to surgery to improve their vision. Right. The reason... The and vision if the is vision is not impaired, is it possible to have a cataract that is just picked up, you know, by accident and that vision is normal? Therefore, that one would be immature cataract. Okay. A immature cataract definitely, need, definitely, definitely need to be removed. And, and what, does it, what, what does it take to, to remove it? It needs a surgery. You have to see by an ophthalmologist. They are going to examine you and yeah. check the visual acuity and also check uh, also, your medical status, your st systemic. Yeah. And then from there, we're going to measure the lens that you're going to put into the eye. Mm. Because we remove the cataract, then we are going to put a lens, right. which is like this, yeah. inside your eye. So you're removing that bad right. cataract. We, we, we remove that bed, we put so a clean one. Yeah. Yeah, a clean one, and yeah. it's going to look like this in the eye. Nobody okay. can see it. It's yeah. only me when I'm using my, my machines in my rooms. All right. Let's take Teresa from East London. Welcome to Health. Clarissa, sorry. Clarissa, welcome morning. to Health Talk. Good mm. morning, doctors. Mm. Um, my husband has got a problem in that he has got two regions, which he's had for a couple of years. Yeah. And should have had them removed at least three years ago. Um, and he's also started off with being short-sighted, and now his far vision is also going. So all we want to know is, can he have his two regions removed, even though they are quite progressed and could you have I think it's called LASIK treatment mm. for his vision to improve it. Thank you for the question. Let's get Dr. Lahori to respond. Terigiums. Terigiums. What is that number one? Terigiums as there's the first caller that talked about it is that growth that goes from the uh, conjunctiva to the cornea mm. and the treatment for that surgery you cut it out. Mm. Then he, she mentioned another thing about the vision. I didn't hear that very well. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, I think it, it revolved around of the other terigiums to say, terigium you know, it needs to be removed. All of them or some that affect vision? Wh which ones? I mean, can you live with it normally? The problem with the terigium, because it's, it works like a, it's like a fibroblast muscle-like, sometimes they can pull and they can cause distorted vision. Mm. That's the reason why sometimes we have to remove it. And once you remove them when they're big, the risk of coming back, they're high. Yeah. That's the problem. Okay. <laughs> Rudin. Contact lenses. You mentioned contact lenses. Are they more expensive than normal glasses 
Or, and who requires contact lenses? Uh, is it everybody that walks in or are they... Uh, but I, I needed to just hold that because unfortunately we have to go for a quick commercial break. So think about it. We'll, uh, we'll answer that after the break. Okay, after the break, we will continue our discussion and perhaps leave you with those tips on how to look after your eyes. Stay with us. Shield Medical Scheme. We don't just talk health, we do health. MedShield Medical Scheme doesn't just cover you when you're ill, we'll help you stay well. The Goodman Gallery is celebrating 50 years promoting art from all sectors of life. Actively involved in social and political life of South Africa, and we really have been. It's been a, been a fascinating place to be and to watch. Your personal style is synonymous to your signature statement. The style is unique. It is a representation of you, your personality, um, the things you like. It speaks on your behalf and uh, it, it just represents the kind of person that you are, your uniqueness. It's hilarious, you know, apart from anything else. It's the satire, the, the sort of commentary on, 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 on what we kind of take for granted as we, as we you know, we exist in daily life. Vote for Wonder Boy with your heart. Vote for Wonder Boy with your heart and run at cinemas nationwide. For your weekly dose of arts and entertainment news, tune into Trends every Saturday from 12 to 1. Welcome back to Health Talk. We're talking eye care with our special guests, Dr. Khaule Khori, a specialist ophthalmologist, and Rudine Diedrichs, a senior optometrist from Melons Eye Style. Now, let's take a Lebo from Ebony Park. Lebo, welcome to Health Talk. Hello, doctor. How are you? Good. How are you, ma'am? I'm good. Mm. Mm. My son, to son, yes. got a problem with the eyesight. He can't see at night. He's struggling to see object, a car, even to work at work with using computer and everything is struggling. So I'm looking for help for him if there is a solution for him or operate. Because the problem started when he was young, when we grow up. He's now 31. 31? Yes. Okay. Has he been to an optometrist or any doctor for that matter? He did when he was young. They say is a normal thing. He can't see it. The procedure was they didn't do him a procedure. They just assessed him long time ago. They say he, they can offer him the sunglass. Not the whatever they, I don't know if the sunglass or what I said that. Mm. But he, all I know is he can't see. Even if I'm walking with him at night, he struggled to see a car or a person. He can even mm. Okay. I that don't know. Th thank you very much for your question, Lebo. That, that's a bit of, of a difficult one because uh, I would imagine, Dr. Lahori, you would require a bit more information. Yes. But, but perhaps just, just some principles around, you know, can't see at night mm. type thing. I, yeah. can, I can give you this uh, uh, two or three of my thinking the way Right. Said. He's that one years old. Right. He's been having this problem all along. He cannot see at night. And those are the things that gives me at least some of it. It might be either he's got either refractive error Right. But the question is that they say they've seen optometrists already, mm. if I'm not wrong. Mm. And those type of people, they're usually myopic, they're mm. short-sighted. Mm. Then now coming to where I come in, is a ret I'm thinking of things that are retinal diseases. Right. Like can be retinitis pigmentosa, yeah. can also be a glaucoma. Yeah. You know, the, the, the patient must go and see an ophthalmologist. Okay. Perhaps Definitely. in terms of, of, of access... Uh, I mean, there is a, 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 an eye hospital in the public sector, mm -hmm. St. John's Eye Hospital based in um, um, Soweto. Soweto. And, and, and of course, if they can afford a private ophthalmologist like yourself, <laughs> uh, they, they, they should consider that. Uh, perhaps that's essentially what you're suggesting, yes, isn't it? So? Yes, yes. All right. Um, before we went for the break, we were talking about, you know, um, uh, 
contact lenses versus normal glasses. How do you make out who requires what? It is very much about your lifestyle and what you uh, need visual correction for. Yeah. You know, sometimes spectacles are just in the way. If you think about our sports people, right. um, if you are in a position or a career where glasses are going to be a hazard, okay, you can get hurt, mm -hmm. then contact lenses is definitely an option. Mm -hmm. But we must also consider the eye conditions where spectacle correction will not give the person um, the best visual outcome mm. and therefore we um, also do contact lenses a lot of the times where spectacles just cannot give that type of correction and mm -hmm. then contact lenses can actually assist that person better. Okay, multifocal lenses, I'm going to ask you about that just now. Let's take Alexandra from Pretoria. Alexandra, welcome to Health Talk. Thank you very much. Mm. My question is this, I had a cataract and I was uh, advised to remove it, which I did do. And uh, since then, my eyes never been the same. Well, I can't see through it properly, there's always a dark spot in the way. Then nope. I went to the hospital and they checked it out and they started to give me injections in the eye once a month, stating that there is a swelling behind the eye and there is some other fluid there also. Yeah. Now, I don't know, I've had six injections already. Well, the same must go for another three before they can do anything else. All right. That's what I would like to know. What is the next procedure? Okay. Brilliant question. Let's ask Dr. Lechodia once again. Yeah, he said he had a cataract operation and he's got a, some, they told him he's got some fluid at the back of the eye. That yeah. is called cystoid macular edema. Right. What, what is that? It's, what? A, it's, a, it's a, a fluid that accumulates just behind the macula. Yeah. It tends to come years after an op cataract operation, or it can just develop on its own. Mm. As he said, they are giving some injection, you know, so that they can, the swelling can subside. Mm. There's some injection that we usually give into the eye, yeah. and some eye drops that usually some use. I think so far he's uh, in in a in a good hands because he must be seeing an ophthalmologist. That's so why is it something treatment. permanent? Is, is it going to get better? It's, it's, most of the time it gets better. Okay. Yeah, the fluid, the fluid just subside. Okay. Yeah. It can take it some months, but yeah. yes, it will subside. Some, some, something positive there. Yeah. You know what? We, before we run out of time, we need to devote some time to just general principles around how, what people should do to look after their eye. Perhaps let's start with you. It is very important for people to realize that regular eye examinations are very important. Right. Um, ophthalmology is, um, you know, obviously very um, specialized in what they do, but for the general public out there, they need to get their eyes tested, yeah. and optometrists are very well equipped okay. to pick so, up problems and so to refer them to special, uh, for right. special treatment. You talk about regular. What is regular? Once, it, once in two years? Every one to two years. One to two years. Definitely. Okay. All right. Dr. Lakhodi, oftentimes, all right, we are in this season now where people yes. say, you know, there's lots of pollen around and people with allergies and that sort of thing. Your advice to people that normally have, you know, these seasonal allergies? Unfortunately, you cannot run away from the pollen. Right. <laughs> Definitely, if the allergies there is going to happen. But mm. the good thing is that it can be treated. Mm. The protective thing that they should do at first, I think that general health. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Look after, after yourself in terms of what you eat. Look after, after yourself. Do not smoke. I know this comes on. We with, talk about it all the time. Please, please do not smoke. Do not smoke. Right. Thirdly, wear protective measures when you are on. You are using, you're cutting your grasses. You know, do some other welding and all those things. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. Wear sunglasses when you're you know going to you know weddings, funerals. It's not that it's for make me nice. It's to protect your side so that you don't even develop cataract at early stages and also not to develop what you call uh, age-related macular degenerations. There are so many things and also use your multivites. You know. I, those are the things that I usually advise people to do that. Mm. And exercise, mm. please. Mm. Your last word, Rudin? I think what you've mentioned is very important. We, we um, forget that the eye is part of the body. Mm -hmm. So if you look well after your body, mm. your eyes will also be at a much healthier level. Yeah. Okay. So the message there is just look after yourself, look after your body, and of course include the eyes. Don't forget that the eyes are a very important part of your body. Well, very much. It's been a fascinating and very informative discussion. I really enjoyed this. And uh, yes, Rudine Diedrichs, Senior Optometrist, Melin's Eye Style. 
and uh, Dr. Khalo Khodi, ophthalmologist, and he has a long string of stuff we can talk about him. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you so much for your contribution, and all the best for your future. Thank, thank you. you. Right, folks, well, it's on that note that we come to the end of our show today. Remember that uh, you can join us again next week uh, on SABC News, same time. And uh, please share your views and comments with us via our Facebook page, SABC Health Talk. And yes, follow us on Twitter at SABC Health Talk. Remember also that this show is going to be repeated today at 2, 2 p.m. and again on Thursday morning at 5 a.m. I'm Dr. Silla Thank you so much for those calls and the tweets. Please do take care.